Welcome back to the channel. As you've seen in the title of this video, we are going to be configuring Google OAuth 2.0. So I've seen quite a few people struggle with Google OAuth 2.0 and I wanted to create a video to show you guys how easy it is to connect and how easy it is to pull emails. So I'm not going to waste any time because I want to make this video as short as possible. Let's get started. So here on our ideapro.io website that we do testing and plug-in samples and stuff like that, we are logged into the dashboard. And again, we don't have that a theme, you know, designed out for this because we kind of use it as an example and we kind of tear it up and stuff like that. So we've got our code open and I've created a folder in the WP content plugins um, folder called gmail hyphen connect. And I've created a gmail hyphen connect dot PHP page. And that is how you create a new plugin. You create a folder inside the plugins directory, and then you create a file with that same name as the folder. That's the default for WordPress. So we're using WordPress if you haven't figured that out for doing this, but you don't have to use WordPress. You can use just direct PHP to also connect to Gmail. But we're using WordPress because I think a lot of you guys are WordPress developers, okay? So here on this file, we're going to open up some PHP tags. We're going to come up here and we're going to make some comments. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to say plugin name and we're going to say Gmail connect. And then we're going to do a description just so we have a little bit of information up here. So connect to Gmail accounts. All right. So we're going to do some close the comment. Whoops. Close the comment there. All right. So now there's a few things that we're going to need for this. So let's save that. I'm going to show you guys the quick start page for Google, but we're not doing the quick start. There's a lot of videos out there that do the quick start and that doesn't help anybody because it's a command line interface uh, quick start that will probably confuse most people more than it will actually help most people. Okay. But I'm going to go to that page just to show you guys really quick what we need from that page. So Google, um, API quick start. Uh, let's just do Google API PHP and right here, PHP quick start. All right. So this is the page that we're looking for. If you follow along this page, you can do a command line, um, that will connect to Gmail but then you have to figure out how to do the rest of it yourself. We're going to use some of the details in here and some of the details we're not. We're, you know, we're not going to use this really at all. We're going to build our own, but it does use some of these items that are in here. Okay. So what we need is we need composer and composer is a, it's an application that you put on your computer or on your web server that you can download dependencies really, really easy and really fast. So if you're doing this on a local machine, you can add Composer to your local machine. If you're doing it on a web server, you can install Composer on your web server. Um, I'm not gonna go into that. There's a lot of videos that show how to, how to install Composer, but that's what we're going to do. We're going to install the Composer library. I mean, we're gonna install the Google library using Composer. So on this quick start page, there's a link right here. Step two, install the Google client library. Step one is turn on the Google API. We haven't done that yet. We're going to do that here in just a second, but here we want composer require Google API 2.0. So we're going to copy that. We're going to open a terminal on the computer and we are in the plugins directory. We want to go into the Gmail connect, which is our plugin. And so now we have our Gmail connect.php in this folder. This is where we want to install the, the composer, the Google API library. And it's going to install a vendor folder, a composer.lock file and a composer.json file. So we're going to go ahead and paste in composer require Google API client 2.0. We're going to hit enter. Now that's going to take a second to download all these dependencies and install all this stuff and which is fine now it's done so now we look and we have a vendor folder and we have a composer.lock and a composer.json the reason why i'm doing this step right now is because 
I just downloaded that on my local machine and I'm going to upload it to the web server. Now, if you do this on your web server, you don't have to upload it. It'll already be there because it's 14,000 files. So I'm going to go over and upload it really quick. And then I will come back and show you guys what, what our next step is. Okay, I've started that process of uploading those files. So now we need to go back to our browser and we need to log in to the organization that we want to create the API on. And that organization could be just your gmail.com address or it could be your um, domains address that's set up on G Suite. So like for ideapro.com, we have that set up on G Suite. So I'm going to use support at ideapro.com to set up that environment. Okay. Google API console. All right, and that's console.developers.google.com. I never remember that URL. I should put it up here in a link, but it's just as easy to search for it. All right, so we're going to create a new project. I'm just gonna say new project, and that project is going to be Gmail Connect Idea Pro IO. All right. And we're going to choose our organization, which is ideapro.com. And we're going to create. And once it's created, Gmail, we're going to select the project. So you don't have any APIs. So now we're going to go to the library and we're going to choose Gmail. Click on Gmail and we're going to enable the API. It takes just a second to enable it. All right, so now we need to go to the credentials. So we're gonna go over there. And first we have to configure the consent screen. So we're gonna click configure consent screen. So user type, you can look at what these user types mean. Um, for all of the apps that we create, we do an external user type. If you do an internal, you have to go through a process of verifying the app and it's just something no one wants to do. So we're gonna create for external and then we're gonna call the app Gmail Connect Idea Pro IO. The support email, we're just gonna use support idea pro. We're not gonna add a logo for this. If we were making this as a external um, connection, then we would add a logo and, and a little bit more information, but we're not too worried about that. All right, so the uh, homepage of the website, which is ideapro.io. So a privacy link. Now these privacy and terms links don't actually have to exist. What these do is it, um, shows that to the end user that's going to connect. So if you're creating an app that is going to be out public, then you want to make sure that privacy and terms links are in there, All right? So ideapro.io slash terms. Again, whoops, again, uh, these do not exist, but it doesn't really matter it's just for the consent screen. So we're not going to add a domain. So we're going to say ideapro.io. Then we're going to come down here and add our who to contact um, ideapro.com, supportideapro.com if something goes wrong or you know the administrative contact. All right, so now we're gonna go into scopes. So now we have to add and remove scopes. So we're gonna click add and remove scopes. We're gonna add everything over here that is available without a lock, all right? So manually add scopes, we don't need to do that. So we're just gonna update. So now we've added these scopes here. We have no sensitive scopes and we have no restricted scopes. If you do a restricted scope with a lock, it, the app has to get approved and it can cost anywhere from fifteen dollars to $75,000 for the process of getting an app approved. So we don't care about that. We're gonna save and continue. 
optional info if you want to share email address of Google contacts you've had in the past. A little bit of information, you know, provide up to three more links to any relevant documentation, blah, blah, blah. We don't care about that. We're going to save and continue. And now this is the summary of our consent screen. Looks good to me. So now we need to go to credentials. Okay, so we haven't created any credentials yet, but we first need to create a page on our app or on our plugin to be able to link those credentials to. Okay, so we're going to go back to our code here and we're going to create a menu option. I'm doing this just to make it as easy as possible. And you can create this page as a standalone page, a PHP page. You can create it inside the um, the WordPress admin, which we're, what we're going to do, or you can make it on the front end of the website and make it a uh, specific page. Like, you know, like for this, we do ideapro.io slash Gmail or something like that, but we're going to do it inside the settings uh, menu. So we're going to do a function and this is going to be our Gmail connect menu item. And we do that. And so then down here, we're going to do add action. So it's going to be an ad, admin menu. And then our callback is actually going to be this function here. Okay. All right. So then in here, we need to do the add options page. And that's a function for WordPress to add a, um, a menu item under the settings. Okay. So we're going to say Gmail connect. And this next one is going to be Gmail connect. The first one is the title that shows up on the page when you click on it. The second one is what our menu will say. And we're just going to say Gmail connect. Our third one here is going to be the, um, the options or the availability of what user can see this. And we're just going to do manage options to make it easy. And that's, any administrator for the website. Okay. All right. So then we're going to do a slug for this, which is going to be Gmail connect menu item. And then we're going to do a callback function, Gmail connect. And we're going to call this page. All right. So Gmail connect page. And then we're going to come down here and we're going to create a function with that here with using that. All right. So now we can say echo. Hello. All right. So now if we go back to our dashboard here and we go to plugins, we look for our Gmail connect plugin here. We're going to activate that. And now our plugins activated. If we come down to our settings, we now have Gmail connect page here that we can open up and it says hello. Okay. So now we're going to come back here. We're going to change this just a little bit. We're going to take out, uh, we're going to close, what am I doing here? We're going to close and reopen the HTML tags or the PHP tags. I'm sorry. And then we're going to create a div with the wrap as the class. And that's the default wrap for creating a page inside of the WordPress admin. It provides all the padding and stuff like that. So then we're going to create an H2 that says, connect to Gmail. Okay. So if we go back here and we refresh this page, now it says connect to Gmail. Okay. So now we have our, our page and we're going to provide a little bit of space because we want to put our Gmail connect information up here. But now that we have this page, we can copy this full URL and go over to our credentials here and we can create new credentials and we're going to call it a OAuth client ID. So the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to choose the application type, which is a web application. We're going to name it Gmail connect client, and you can name it whatever you want. Just, it's just something so that we know what we're, what we're doing. We're going to add a URI, which is HTTP ideapro.io. And then we're going to add a redirect URL. So, this is the URL that we copied from here. So we're going to paste that in and we're going to hit create. Now it's going to create those credentials and it's going to pop up and show us these credentials here. We don't care about this. We want to click. Okay. 
Okay, so we're going to download our JSON file here. And again, you can see these in the, if you log in or click on this, you can see the client ID and the secret. But this little download link provides us a JSON file. And that's what we want to, we want to look at. So here, it's, we've downloaded this JSON file into our downloads. So here's this long client secret, blah, 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 blah. We want to rename this to, let's just call it Gmail Connect dot JSON. And we're gonna move that to our um, Gmail Connect folder in a new folder, and we're gonna call it creds. You can call that folder whatever you'd like. I like to call it creds for short for credentials. So we're gonna open that folder. We're gonna drag over this Gmail Connect into that folder. So, I went, so now we have our Gmail Connect dot JSON. Okay, so now let's go back to our code really quick because now here in our Gmail Connect folder, we've got this creds folder and the Gmail Connect JSON. So we're gonna upload that folder to our server. All right, so now here at the top of our code, we need to define some constants. If you don't know what a constant is, you can look at my other PHP tutorial videos to show what variables are, what, you know, um, different types of variables and what a constant is. Okay, so we're going to call this constant uh, creds path. Let's add a S yes in there. Creds path. And so this creds path is going to be the plugin directory path. And we're going to do underscore underscore file. Whoops, underscore underscore file underscore underscore. So what that does is it says look in the plugin directory path for this file and then we are going to point it to the creds okay we're going to put a slash after that so basically this will give us the um, directory for the credentials here so now we want to define the json whoops json creds and that is going to be the creds path dot and then our what we called it is gmail connect dot json so gmail connect dot json hope i haven't lost you guys on that this gmail connect json file if you open it it shows that it is the a web client or a web application and the client id the secret it has kind of the project ID, all the details, you know, the redirect and all that kind of stuff. So we're gonna close that. All right, so now we've defined our creds path and our JSON creds here. This creds path is gonna become uh, useful again here in just a second, okay? So now we're gonna start creating the function to actually connect to, to Google, okay? I say function gmail connect get client okay all right so now inside of this we're going to put in a lot of the vendor um, we're going to pull in the vendor information and, and all that stuff um, this is going to be the function that we're going to run to see if a client is connected or if not if not then it's going to provide them a url that they can click on and connect okay so here at the top of this, we're going to require, and we're gonna require the auto load, which is inside of the vendor. So if you open this vendor folder, there's an auto load.php here, and you can open this and you can see that it says composer auto load, and then it's a, a, a unique URL here to, to load that file. So we want to load, bring in that auto load file. So we're gonna say plugin, directory whoops plugin dir path and again we're going to say underscore underscore file underscore underscore dot vendor slash auto load dot php okay so that brings in that now to check and make sure that we've done this correctly we can just say echo welcome right and so then we can call this function right down here under this so we're gonna come inside we still want to stay inside of this wrap 
we want to open up some PHP tags and we're just going to put that there and we're going to save and we're going to come over here to our website page here I'm going to refresh and it says welcome so if you re use require and you pull in that auto load and it doesn't find it this echo welcome will not show up so let me change this auto loads let's change this to break it really quick come back over here and I'll refresh and it's having trouble and it's going to say require we can't see what's going on something's going on with your website right so we know for sure that this is working as auto load because now the welcome message shows up and it loads it really really fast okay all right so now we're going to walk through the process of connecting to the google client since we have the auto load here and if it's not connected then we're going to show a um, a url that will connect so what we're going to do is we're going to say client is equal to new google client okay and then we're going to say client and this becomes an object after this new google client all right so we're going to set application name and we're just going to call it idea pro io example connection right all right so then we need to do set scopes, set scopes. All right. So now this is where we, it gets confusing for a lot of people. If you go back and you look at the quick start guide, the quick start guide says documents read only. Um, that's because we're not in the, we're in Google Docs API. We actually need the Gmail. So let's do Gmail API PHP. There we go, quick start guide here. So this is the Gmail API, sorry about that. So it's the same thing, it loads, <coughs> excuse me. It's the same thing, it loads the same library. It's just when we come down here to the example, it now says Gmail read only. So we're not gonna use Gmail read only because basically that literally just goes and reads your Gmail. Now, um, we didn't set up scopes in our uh, consent, you know, in our credentials to allow full access to Gmail, but we can still call in that scope even though we didn't ask for it, ask permission for it in our uh, application. We can still use all the um, options of Gmail. So this scope here, and if you look, we're using pretty much this right here in our page, okay? So our scopes are going to be Google service, whoops, that's a capital, come on, cap service, Gmail. And then this is where um, we would usually use Gmail read only. We're actually going to use mail Google com. And that's the full access to Gmail, right? So then the next thing we're gonna set is we're gonna set the um, auth config auth config i think that's what it's called and that is going to be our uh, gmail credentials all right so this is our json creds so we're going to bring that down we're going to paste that there so that is our json credentials to connect with auth config okay so the next one is going to be client this one is going to be set access type and I'm not gonna explain what the access type is, but basically you want it offline. Because anytime it's, if it's online, uh, or if it's not offline and the person's not connected continuously, it'll it disconnect. <coughs> Client set prompt. And this is going to be, <coughs> we're gonna create two variables here and they're space delimited. The same thing with our scopes here. If we wanted more scopes, we could space delimit space delimit them. We could put a space in there and add more scopes that we wanted. So here we're gonna say 
select account and this gives you the ability to select what Gmail account you want to connect to and then we're going to give it the consent screen. So these are space delimited and we're going to ask for select connect account and consent. Okay. So now we need a token path. Token path is equal to and we're going to use our credence, uh, credentials path up here, which is our creds path. Dot. Now that puts us into the creds folder. So now we need to say token underscore dot JSON. Now, after this underscore, we're gonna use the user ID that's built into WordPress. You don't have to use that user ID, but it's an easy way to to do it to make sure that each person connects to their own Gmail account, right? So if you were creating just a default um, that you wanted to connect, like info at, right? You could just use a zero here or something, or just call it JSON uh, token.json and then connect that one account. But everyone that logs in as an administrator would be connected to that same account. So here we're actually going to pull in in our function, we're going to come up here and we're going to say global current user. And what that does is it pulls in the current user that's logged in. So down here on our JSON file, we're going to put in current user, I spell it right, current user ID. Okay, so now what that's going to do is it's going to take the current user's ID and look for the token for that current user. Now we get into the details of it, right? So if file exists, and we're gonna say token path, token path. And this is where it's gonna connect, else it's gonna show us a link that needs to connect. So if the token path is there, we're going to now connect and get the, um, the client, all right? So we are, so let's say access token is equal to JSON decode, decode, and then inside here we're going to say file get contents, and that is going to be our token path. Token path, and then after this one we're going to say comma true. Now what this true is, is if we took out file get contents here, this first um, argument inside of JSON decode is what we want to decode. And we're getting the file, the info from the, that file. Now true after that puts it into an array. So we're gonna file get contents token path and we're gonna say true, okay? All right, so now we're gonna say dollar sign client which is our object from the new Google client up here. We're gonna say set access token. And we're gonna say dollar sign access token. There we go. All right. So if dollar sign client, and this is where we're gonna see if the token has expired, is access token expired all right so if the token access is expired we need to refresh the token okay so client is access token expired this is a method inside of the google client um, object or class so if it's expired we need to you know refresh that token all right so when you say if dollar sign client get refresh token, if I can type right. So if this is true, if it's going to get the refresh token, then we're going to um, fetch the access token, right? So client. So we need to fetch access token with refresh 
token and we're going to do client get refresh get refresh token okay and that is a there we go all right so what the, basically what that does is it gets the access token with refresh token so it gets the in our json file we have a refresh token so we take that refresh token and get a new token with that refresh token okay so that's all we need to do on that else if it can't get the refresh token we have to log in again okay so here we're going to say echo and we're going to create a link that says connect to gmail all right so then the href for this link is going to be a oops we're going to call in the um, auth link let's call it that that looks good auth link so up here we're going to say auth link is equal to dollar sign client uh, create auth URL. I think that's right. You can actually look at here and look and make sure that that is right. Create auth URL. I think that's right. Yeah, we were right. Okay. So a lot of the stuff that I'm using is here, you know, get refresh token, you know, all this stuff. The problem is, is this will only run in command line and I want to make sure you guys understand how to run it not in command line. But a lot of the stuff is right here that we're using. Okay. So now we have connect to Gmail. All right. So that is if the token exists, um, if it's expired, it gets a re it refreshes it. If it can't refresh, then it gives us the link. Okay. So now else the, um, it's not expired. Now we need to, um, the, the token is good. So we really don't need to do anything. We can actually just take this out. We don't even need that else statement in there. Okay. So now what we need to do is there's, there's kind of a two part process in here. So if the access token doesn't exist, we need to create a link. So we're going to do that really quick. And then we're going to add to this just a little bit. So, we're just going to copy this and paste it right here. And basically that is saying that if the, um, if the file doesn't exist, we need to connect. So let's get the create auth URL and let's show that connection. All right. So here we want to, before we close this function, we want to return the client. Okay. So what we're doing is we're, we're returning this client. That way we have that information if we need it. Okay. So now let's save this and let's go over here and look at our uh, page here and we do a refresh. If everything works, we got to connect to Gmail link. Now, if we connect to Gmail, if we click this link, it will ask us for the, it will pop up the consent screen that we can log in and connect and all that stuff. But the problem is, is it's going to bring us back here if once we connected and we need to write the code to capture that connection. All right. So inside of this else statement, we need to write some code. And what comes back from Google is a URL with the code in the URL. So we're going to say dollar sign code. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. We're going to say if is set get code so in that url it's, it's going to come back as that that code in the url now you can sanitize this code and stuff like that i'm not going to in this video but you can sanitize that code to make sure there's no html and javascript and blah blah so that it so someone doesn't affect your website i'm not going to worry about it in here so if the auth code, so we're going to say auth code. So if it's equals to dollar sign underscore get, and we say code. Okay. So else here is where we're going to say log in. And we're going to take this away. We don't need that. 
So that way, whenever it comes back, it doesn't give us this auth link. It will actually um, process the code that's received. And then from there, we can do um, what, whatever else we need to, okay? So now we need to um, exchange our authorization code for the access token. So we wanna say access token is equal to client fetch access token with auth code. Okay, so now we're gonna use auth code here. All right, so then we need to set the access token. So we're gonna say client set access token and that's going to be with the access token okay and so then now we need to um, really check and see if there's any errors with that so if array key exists and that's going to be error in the access token, right? Array access token, yeah. Um, if there's an error, then we need to uh, throw, throw new exception. And we're going to join the comma with the um, access token. All right, so that's just an exception that's gonna throw if something, if something goes wrong. All right, so now we can come down here. Now, we don't have to do an else statement after this because if it throws this exception, it's gonna just, it's gonna stop. So down here, if, that, if there's no errors, now we need to put the files from the access token into a JSON file, okay? So we're gonna say file, put contents, tents, there we go, put file contents, and we're gonna say token path, which is our variable from right here that says this is what our token name is gonna be. So put, put, file, put file contents, JSON encode, and we're gonna encode the client get access token, token, there we go. All right, so we have one open, two open, three open, one, two, three. Okay, just to make sure, because there's a lot of closing all right, so now we have the stuff to grab that code, and now we can pull this, um, this access token. So now we're gonna go over here and refresh and see if it works. Uh, let's do this first. Let's print out the client. So let's say client is equal to, and let's do a print array client. All right, so now if we refresh, it's gonna give us an object with a bunch of this information in it because it's still creating a new client up here. It's creating a new client, even though we're not connected, it's still gonna give us the all the details from within the, the client object, right? So we're gonna hit connect to Gmail, and it's gonna give us the consent screen, which is a huge, long, uh, consent screen here. We're going to connect with, well, let's connect with DeepMark reports. And it says ideapro.io wants to access your Google account, DeepMark at, DMARC at ideapro.com. This will allow ideapro.io to read, compose, send, and permanently delete all your email from Gmail. Now, that's because we used in the, um, the scopes here, we used mail, Google, com. If we did 
uh, Gmail read only. Is that what it is? Uh, quick start. Here it is. If we did, uh, oh, here it is. Gmail read only, it would say it, you can read, read labels and, you know, stuff like that from your email. But we're doing pretty much everything, right? So we're going to say allow. And now it's going to redirect us back and it's going to say file put contents public WP content Gmail creds token failed to open stream permission denied. So we have a permission denied issue on our server. So, okay. So I went and I fixed those permission issues. Um, you should not have those permission issues. Our servers are very, very strict on what's allowed and what's not. So creating that folder the way I did, uploaded it, and didn't go and turn on and, and change those permissions, it's very, very strict. So we're gonna go back over here to our Gmail Connect file, and now we have Gmail Connect. So now we're gonna reconnect, and it should create our JSON file, okay? So connect to Gmail. We're gonna use the same account allow and come back and now we didn't get an error and we connected and this is actually our our client id connection here okay so now if we come back over here if we browse the remote of the credentials folder so if we browse remote so now we have a token 2.json and that is the user id for um, my account on ideapro.io so if we open that Whoops, I did not want to rename it. I want to download it. There we go. So now this says access token and it gives the access token um, and refresh token here expires in 3,599 seconds, which is uh, an hour. Uh, refresh token. So it's constantly going to be getting this uh, a new token unless, you know, you know constantly because um, it expires every hour. So then this tells all the details and stuff like that. So we don't need that anymore. So now we're connected. So now if we navigate to the dashboard and we come back to settings, um, Gmail connect, it's gonna give us our client information and it no longer needs us to connect, right? Because it, it knows that we're connected, okay? So now we don't have to show that client connection anymore. So, right? So now that we're connected, we can now connect to um, our email, all right? So, and we can do that up here in this function, or we can write a new function that says, you know, get the, um, get the email, all right? So I'm not gonna go into the details of, oh, if the client is blah, 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 and you know, all that stuff. We just wanna do it right here so that, so that it makes it easy, okay? So we are going to write a function called gmail connect list emails okay so now we're going to write the function for listing the emails and we're going to call that right here and we're going to say list dollar sign list is equal to boom now it needs to say you know if it's connected then list the emails but we're not going to worry about that because typically you don't want to list the emails on the uh, where you're connecting it at so i'm just using this as an example so gmail connect list emails so what we're going to pass through is we're going to pass through the client so this client will go and get a client and then pass it through to this so we're going to say client down here and so now inside of this, we can use those functions, uh, that object client to pull in the email, all right? So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna say service, and we're gonna say new Google service Gmail, all right? And then we're gonna open that and we're gonna say client. And then this is what confuses people. If you go over here and you look at the um, Gmail API here, the it really doesn't tell you um, anything past connecting right the thing it does tell you here is how to get the labels and you can use this just like they are here to get the labels the user me is what throws a lot of people off okay so we're going to create a new user 
and it's going to be me. Their API documentation says the email address or use me, as, you know. So we're gonna say user me, and then we're gonna do some um, opt param. These are just optional parameters. And, oh my name. So page token, and we're not gonna worry about a page token. We're gonna say null. So basically what that is, uh, I like to do that capital. So basically what the page token is, is the first page of Google is how many messages we're gonna pull. And then the second page would be the next set, and then the next set, and the next set. So it's pagination basically for um, for this. So the opt param is uh, max results. And now this is the maximum number of results that we want to pull. So if we do 20, um, the max, I'll put out here, max is 500. And that is when you need the pagination if you want to go past 500 to 501 to 1001 or whatever you need to use that page token um, and I'm not going to get into details about that on this video but so um, before we do that I like to do opt param is equal to I like to set that as a uh, an array before we before we do that all right so now we want to um, message response is equal to our service that we called up here for the new Google Mail service. Service users messages list users messages and then the user and the optional parameters, okay? All right, so from there, we have a message response. So now if we went in and we said print array and we printed this message response and we come back here to our page and we refreshed, now this is our Google message response. So basically, these are the um, messages that we have in the in the system so there's nine total messages right so you can parse these out and get the you know message ID which I'm going to show you really quick how to do all right so what we want to do is we want to say dollar sign messages and we want to create that as an array and then we want to do a return and I'll show you why we're doing that here in just a minute so and then we want to do a return messages is equal to an array. All right, so here we're going to do if, and I know this video is so freaking long, messages response get messages. So if it's getting their messages is true, then we're gonna say messages is equal to array merge. And we're gonna merge the messages, messages and the message response get messages. Okay, so what that does is it adds the each messages each of those messages into the message array. Okay, so now we want to for each we want to loop through these messages. Dollar sign messages as message. Okay. All right. So now the message ID message ID is equal to message get ID and so we're pulling this message here from the value here ok 
Okay, so now we have a message ID. So now if we do print, we can say message ID, and we're gonna add a break in there just to break them per line. We're gonna come back. Oh, I guess I already commented out that, or got rid of that. So now we should have, if we refresh this page, we should have a list of the messages IDs. Oh, message response on line 121. I did not spell it right. There we go. Now fix that, go back here and refresh. Um, array merge expected parameter two null given on line 123. Get messages. There we go. Forgot my parentheses. All right. So now we have a list of the message IDs. Okay. So now to get each one of those messages into its own information, we can say let's do full message is equal to service users messages get and it's going to be the user ID me and the message ID okay so now we can do a print array and show the full message and we can do a let's do a thing here to show the break in between each one of the messages because it's going to show all of them. Okay, we go back here and we do a refresh. And so now it's going to show each individual message. And so in this message, we have the payload. And in that payload, we have headers, which the headers are going to be delivered to, received, X received. Um, the subject will be in here. So the subject is subject, 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 subject. Here it is. So report domain idea pro submitter, blah, 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 blah. So this is a, the subject of the actual email. And then you have to parse out, parse out the body and all that stuff. So this is, doesn't have anything in the body of the email. It just is an attachment. And so this video has gotten really, really long. I showed you guys how to connect. I showed you guys how to pull messages. Um, I can make another video to show you how to send messages and parse out these messages and stuff like that. But I'm gonna cut this video here because it's gotten really, really long. It's a lot of detail in here. It's not hard to connect. It's just a lot of details. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like and subscribe. Comment and let me know your thoughts on the Google OAuth connection and what uh, how I did in explaining it. And I will see you guys in the next video.